The throes of fall are upon us. Winter is coming. You could see it marching up over that hillside. We're having crazy weather all over the country. We have hurricanes in Florida. We have tornadoes in Oregon on the west coast. Crazy, right? So what we're doing now is trying to be prepared for the winter storms. Last year we had our world rocked by a storm. And this year we've smartened up a bit. So we want to share with you a few things that we've learned since then. Grab your drink. Let's get going. Da, 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 da. Be prepared. Uh, what are you doing? Huh? Uh, singing? Singing what? Uh, be prepared from the Lion King? Dude, it doesn't sound like that at all. You suck at singing. <laughs> oh. We also have a golden nugget on how to turn windstorms into money, but you have to stick around till the end. <laughs> When we first went off grid about a year ago, we found it really easy to disconnect from the outside world. We're just busy in our own life and we really didn't have uh, that much of an interest in what's going on around us per se. But that left us really vulnerable because we had no idea that some severe weather was en route. If we would have been a little more in touch with our neighbors or even through like the news or even the internet, we would have known that there were some really high winds coming our way. We do follow uh, weather on our phones using like a weather app, but we find that these uh, forecasts are really generic and so they're for a very broad area and they're really not reliable. One of our neighbors recommended getting this app from NOAA, which for you folks who live uh, stateside, um, you'll find this a really valuable app, but it actually just shows weather patterns that are developing or happening um, kind of in a time lapse and a bit of a forecast. So a lot of times we can zoom in and see what's happening in our area and not so much kind of rely on like, is it gonna be windy, hot, sunny, those types of things, but we can see where the weather is developing and whether or not we're gonna be affected by it. So we recommend if you use this type of technology like a smartphone or even just use the internet, if you can get on board with some of these um, modern technologies, it's amazing how you can be kind of uh, prepared for things that are coming your way. If you use social media like Facebook, we strongly recommend liking and following your nearest uh, National Weather Service page. They post urgent and uh, priority information. We find it really reliable. A lot of times they show maps and images to go with the forecast. So you can kind of look at your area and see if it's something that's going to directly affect you instead of looking at a more generic forecast. We even follow a few independent weather services on Facebook, and they also provide a lot of up-to-date information. They're private, so they require our support to keep them going. Uh, and we find this information to be really valuable. So look for local groups or even private organizations in your area that provide up-to-date weather information. Another thing we've done to get more prepared because internet is not always reliable is jump on some radios. First, we picked up a small, affordable um, radio that actually has a weather service uh, service built into it. You can just push the weather button and it jumps to the local, I'll turn it off. It jumps to the local uh, National Weather Service. You don't need internet to run these. As long as they're charged up, they're good to go. And this radio is also waterproof. So we can take it with us if the weather gets nasty. We also picked up a multi-band radio that actually can uh, listen to the ham channels and a local emergency uh, dispatch and other radios. So uh, these two radios are different, but they allow us to work without the use of internet and monitor local communications. Next, we always try to be prepared but especially when we know a storm's coming, we try to make sure that our basic needs are met, such as food, water, shelter, and warmth. And because we're off grid, we're detached from the normal utility grid, so getting these things in order really is our responsibility. We get our water from a large cistern located at the top of our hill, which is gravity fed. Twice a month, we take this baby into town to a community water source and we fill the cistern up. If a storm's coming, we go ahead and top the water off wherever it's at just to be safe, and a full cistern, 600 gallons, will last us about a month. While we use solar power for our primary power source, we also have a backup generator. If we know a storm's coming into town, we go ahead and top up on generator fuel, just so we know that we're good for at least maybe five to ten days. Last year, during that crazy wicked storm, this little guy saved our bacon. Without this, it would have been pitch dark and raining sideways, and we would have just been out of luck. Thankfully, we had some portable power on hand. We were able to get things lit back up and get to work putting things back together. Next, hunkering down and staying warm because no one wants to freeze on the inside when it's cold outside. We want to be warm. 
For heat, we rely on wood and propane. In the summer months, you can find us out in the forest, cutting down trees, cutting wood, all so that when the first storm rolls in, we're ready. Also, we make sure that our propane's always topped off in case Jesse can't light a fire. Next, ain't never wanna be cold, ever. Even though we have wood and propane to keep us warm, there are definitely times where it's raining sideways at maybe 2 a.m. and something is happening outside and we have to go out to take care of it. So we try to have warm clothing on hand, warm pants, good shoes that can get muddy, so there's no excuse to not work. This goes without saying, but we try to have some food on hand. I mean, if you're stuck inside from a storm all day, what else is there to do other than eat? I'm not saying we're gluttons, but we like food and we never want to be hungry. We have a long way to go in the food preservation department, but we did get a pretty good start on it this summer and we canned a lot of fruit. If all else fails, we'll binge on jam. We also walk around the property and see what types of things are ready to take flight. Last year, I got her to achieve all of this fun stuff out of the road while Jesse sat in the car and listened to Irish music. Now this type of stuff is covered in paperweights. You might be thinking to yourself, gosh, I don't know if my blankety blank is windproof. So we took the time to develop a small test so you can check if your blankety blank is windproof. Your blankety blank could be patio furniture, a wood pile, or even a loved one. the test. I found it to be pretty reliable. Disclaimer, if you try this on your wife, I cannot be held accountable if you sleep on the couch for at least a month. But if you do, put it on YouTube. We learned that even though we're just getting started off grid and we're building a lot of things that seem to be temporary on the outside, they still need to be strong. Just three days after completing this cabin is when that hundred mile an hour wind storm hit. And I'm honestly shocked and elated that it's still standing. In fact, it's the most durable structure on our property. This is another reason we haven't put a roof on the hot tub deck because we're not sure with the winds here whether we could keep it planted safely. So when you're building structures on your property, even if you've just arrived, be sure to take the time to make sure that they're strong and durable, even if they're just a temporary structure. We know for a lot of people, when they first start off grid, it's very tempting to go with a temporary type structure, which we did to provide some shelter for our RV. The thing is, when you're choosing that structure, even though it's a temporary thing, you really want to think about making sure it's able to withstand some pretty severe weather. This particular structure, we actually have battened down to a nice foundation, and on high wind storms, it's not uncommon for us to strap it down to a vehicle just to be safe. When we first arrived in the property, the first thing I noticed was the quality of the soil. And I was afraid of the first good rain turning all of this into a bunch of muck. Now I would say my concerns weren't really justified because as it turns out, the soil percolates great. But I think we were justified in putting down a good bed of rock and getting it well packed before the storms arrived. So if you have a driveway or you're arriving on bare land, think about putting something solid down so you can be sure to get around when the rains come. All right, it's time for that golden nugget, but you have to make a promise. You have to keep it to yourself, okay? If you're prepared and you're somewhat opportunistic, a ravaging storm can actually be ripe with opportunity. We found out last year during that crazy windstorm that there was a tremendous amount of trees and wood available if you just would come and get it. There were a lot of people who had trees in their yard with no means to remove them, and they'd be more than happy to let you have the wood if you'll just come take it out of their yard. So if you can and you see a storm coming, get prepared. You might find yourself with endless raw materials like firewood or even high quality lumber. These trees right here in front of me are just some of the windfall that we picked up on our own property last year. The uh, posts on our deck up there and some of the other components are also windfall. We were able to take these materials that otherwise would go to waste and turn them into something useful. 
and there you have it. That's how we get prepared for storms now. Truthfully, it is something to take seriously. It can cause a lot of property damage or even loss of life. We've been very fortunate, but wanted to pass on to you some of the things that we've learned. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about our off-grid home setting project, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our blog. We'll put links to all that fun stuff below. We'll see you next time. Thank you.